Hello, Nintendo Fans Alliance. My name is Golem, and with me I have a guest. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Anthony. This is my first um, LP. Kind of, kind of new to this whole thing, so just bear with me as we as we go through the stage. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, so to catch you up on uh, what all has been happening, Mega Man's been on sort of a genocidal craze, uh, and he's taken out six of the Mavericks, leaving Boomerang Kawanger and Storm Eagle. And uh, Boomerang Kawanger's number is up in this episode. <laughs> so, so what's with the uh, genocidal rampage? Uh, he, well, they don't agree with his opinions, so he has to kill him. <laughs> it's always funny considering how much he's a pacifist later on, but that's a... <laughs> <laughs> I guess, uh, if you think about how McCain calls himself a maverick, uh, you could say this is about, like, uh, if Obama decided to kill his opponents. I guess I could see that. <laughs> Just running around shooting with a ball of electricity. Yeah. Fair enough. With uh, Spark Palin's power. Okay, there we go, Spark Palin. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity McCain. <laughs> I like it. Don't forget Guts Big Guts D. Oh, definitely. God, this is really good, I like this. So, uh, yeah. we got more purple okay. turtles. I see that. Uh, you know, as I said, I've always been a fan of um, using using uh, Storm Eagle's power on, the, on them. It's so much easier you to sit back. You don't have to get up close. Oh, I dodge, love... dodge much of anything. I love Storm Eagle's power. It's such a shame he's going to be the last one in this uh, LP. I think overall his stage is the best, the best design, though. With the um, interaction with everything. You have the flame tanks you can blow up. The um, the terminals, the glass explodes when you when you fire bus buster shots. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I also love using Stink Chameleon's power here when it's charged up. You just ride right through everything. You mean like the spike platforms don't hurt you? No, not at all. Wow. Yeah, there's no um, crush damage or anything. That's insane. The same thing kind of happens on a uh, launch octopus's stage. You know, with the mini boss that tries to suck you in. Okay. It just doesn't suck you in at all if you have the charged uh, chameleon sting going on. I've always liked the epicness of this stage too, with the um, the climbing the tower to get to the boss. Having like the sky background as you're scaling upwards. Yeah, definitely. I think that's one. Th I think that that's one thing that kind of hurt the other Mega Man games. Like when you have um, like Crash Man, for example, it's just a plain blue black background. Which I mean, it's, I guess it's supposed to be the sky. And then as you get further and further up, it, it, it kind of gets dark, like as if you're scaling into like space. I thought it was like but, the coming night. Is that what it is? I always felt like you were like you were starting down by Earth, and then you were climbing higher and higher up until you got into like the atmosphere, like the outer atmosphere. That's pretty cool. I didn't think it was that. Way. But I think like the lack of like any real clouds and um, stars when you get to like higher up, it, it kind of affects the uh, the, uh, the overall. Uh, view you get that the overall um Aesthetics. can't think of what I'm trying to say here <laughs> uh, <laughs> atmosphere something like that like it, it affects the ambiance of the stage yeah yeah I can see that I always thought I always thought the enemy design Mega Man was pretty clever too we have um you know carrots on platforms uh, you have wall-mounted cannons, all, all sorts of stuff that would normally seem inconsequential, but you still manage to get damaged regularly because, you know, it's there. <laughs> and unless you've played the game, like, so many times that you remember, like, enemy placement, you tend to get hit at least once or twice by things that, you know, are, like, weak enemies in general. I guess what's kind of nice about Mega Man is that even if you do get hit, you get a lot of health back. That's true. Uh, I think the overall difficulty of the series itself is is um is the fact that enemies drop so much health for you. Yeah. yeah. For Mega Man One, that was just absurd. Oh God, Mega Man One was absurd in so many ways. Speaking of uh, Mega Man One, this guy kind of reminds me of Cutman. And then he has that he has that quick man speed to him too, the way he teleports around the stage. Oh yeah, <laughs> kind of explains the after images. I think and it's then you a got little. The, you got, go ahead. 
He's a little faster than Quick Man, I'd say. Yeah. I just wonder if they added a time stop power to, to this, would it hurt him? Like, every second. <laughs> I'd like to see that. I always thought that was dumb, by the way. You could freeze time, but you couldn't fire in the frozen time. Meanwhile, when you put Flash Man, he could do whatever he wanted. Hey, yeah, uh, that's what Bright Man is for. That, that's kind of like uncontrollable firing. You just fire. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Speaking of fire... <laughs> so, so do you think Boomer Quanger was made by Volkswagen? He is based on a beetle, after all. <laughs> Wouldn't put it like, past do you... him. <laughs> like, like, do you think if Mega Man turned him over after he was done, it's a giant VW stamp on his backside or something? <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity for product placement, Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's his whole problem. He's, you know, he's German. He has problems with anyone who's not like him. <laughs> Mega Man right now is blue and yellow, so he's pretty Aryan. Aryan. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> this is a little too political, though. <laughs> that wasn't really trying to take it that far. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. You know what's interesting to note is that um, Boomer Quanger and I think Launch Octopus are the only two that I know of in this this game are for two of the first Reploids they had that actually have like Reploid siblings. Um, Launch Octopus is supposed to be related to Squid Adler, I think, in Mega Man X Five. Yeah, I remember and, that. And he's supposed to be related to Gravity Beetle from Mega Man X Three. Oh no way. Yeah. Which is funny, because, you know, they're both Beatles. I guess that's You gotta... Yeah. No, I, I'm just saying, I guess that figures. I think, I think... I think what the whole thing was with, um, with regular Mega Man, you know, everything was made by Wily, so you assume that they were all brothers in a way. It's one very big fan. Um... Yeah, you had all the, all the Robot Masters being made by Wily. And then, you know, it's like, okay, well, Crash Man, Quick Man, they're all technically related in that, in that way, shape, or form. And then everything is mass-produced by the time X comes along. Um, so that they had, they had to create some kind of familial ties for backstory. Because you know how fans are. I feel kind of bad for Roll, then, who doesn't get a sister until Mega Man 9. I even, you know, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> it's just a boys club. <laughs> The sorcerer's party in the light compound. <laughs> and he is dead. Wow. I always like the music to this franchise. Mega Man's always had great music to me. Ah. Uh, well, I like his music up through X4 and then... Fair enough. Uh, I, I didn't really play X5, X6, X7, or X8 that often. <laughs> but I did play I enjoyed. I think um, they kind of artificially inflated the, the difficulty with the, the armor select and everything like that. Oh yeah. Like it, it felt it felt it didn't feel like natural difficulty. It felt like they were just trying to make it hard for you know to be hard. For, it felt like they were trying to make it hard just for hardness' sake at that point. Because everybody thought Mega Man was hard, so. Yeah, but I mean they were hard within a limit. Like X one, Mega Man one was the only one that was just like unnaturally hard for no damn reason. Yeah. And then by the time 2 and the rest came along, they were hard for... because they were genuinely difficult. Yeah. Oh well. Speaking of genuinely difficult, it's genuinely difficult to say goodbye this week. It is. It really is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you for having me, and hopefully I will come back again sometime soon. Pleasure to have you. Anytime. And, uh, you, you know I was kidding about that Aryan stuff, right? <laughs>